This is Learning Python Data Analysis, published by PAC Publishing. I'm Ben Hoff, and this is Section 4, Presenting Stories via Simple Visualizations. In this section, we're going to take a look at introducing both PyQt and Matplotlib, creating bar charts, creating pie charts, and doing some simple XY plots with axis scales. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've created quite a few programs at this point. We've created a couple of terminal applications that run straight from the terminal. We've worked with Jupyter Notebook, which is basically a web application. And now we're going to start working on creating desktop applications. If you're working with data science and you don't need to show anyone, I'd recommend sticking with simple terminal applications, as Python interfaces nicely with these using the print statement. But one step above using the print statement, but still in terminal land, is creating a console user interface. You can do this using either the curses module from the Python standard library, or Erwid if you want a more high-level widget-based library. But we're going to be making a desktop application. Desktop applications are nice for a couple of reasons. They're more attractive than console applications. Users are much more familiar with them, making them less scary than a console application. You get all the power of the computer running it, and most importantly to this video series, you don't have to learn another language. You can program a desktop application in sweet, sweet, merciful Python. Don't get me wrong, web applications are definitely the most well-known and common type of application nowadays, and it totally makes sense. The interface is standardized across all platforms, for the most part. Scaling web pages is well-explored territory. And all you really have to do is point your browser at the correct address and voila, you're done. From a user's perspective. On the programmer side, you have to learn JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, which is a little beyond the scope here for this video series. There are plenty of tutorials out there if you're interested. If you want to program the backend in Python, make sure you check out both either Django or Flask, which are good frameworks to look at for creating the server side. I'd recommend starting with Flask if you're building something simple, and Django if you're building something much larger. As a side note, if all you're looking at to do is a simple presentation, especially something interactive, I cannot recommend enough using Jupyter Notebooks with the NB Convert in extension installed to actually make slides. It's a super helpful little extension there. So all recommendations aside, let's get back to desktop applications. We'll be using the Qt framework for this series. It's a robust, cross-platform, graphical user interface library built using C++. We'll be using the PyQt bindings for the Python interface. So let's go ahead and create our first application. Let's call this our matplotlib example GUI. And the first thing that we're going to do is import the sys module. And then we can go ahead and get right started with from the PyQt module grabbing the Qt widgets module. And the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and create a Q application, which is pretty simple. All it needs is the argv from the sys module. And then we'll go ahead and create our main window, which as you might have guessed is uh, the window that's gonna pop up for us. And we'll be using the Q main window class for that. And since we don't want to get confused about what this is, let's go ahead and set the uh, window title here. And we'll just call this our matplotlib example. Perfect. And we want this to actually pop up on the screen. So let's call the show method on that main window. And we want this to run continuously and not exit. So we'll call it the exec function. And then if we exit that and we run that, we get our first graphical user interface. So let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. All graphical user interface frameworks or GUI frameworks need a way to execute code asynchronously in order to handle user inputs. Qt does this by using an event loop and Q, app Q application is going to handle this event loop for us. The only thing we really need to do is initialize it like we did here and then call the exec function like we did here. An important thing to understand about Qt is its use of widgets. According to the documentation, widgets are the primary element for creating user interfaces. They can display data and status information, receive user input, 
and provide a container for other widgets that should be grouped together. A widget that is not embedded in a parent widget is called a window, which means it has a frame and a title bar. Much like our main window here has the uh, frame and the actual title bar, which is showing our matplotlib title right now. QMain window is nice as it has some helper methods for implementing some common things that you often see in user interfaces, especially desktop user interfaces, such as the menu bar, a status bar, toolbars, doc widgets, and then our central widget. So being a framework, Qt is out to help you create applications. And if you want to explore this some more, I'd recommend creating a simple menu bar using Q menu bar with a file menu and an exit action. So our GUI is looking a little sparse right now. So let's go ahead and spice it up. The main thing for Q main window is to decide what to use as a central widget, as is shown in our picture here, right? A lot of the screen space is devoted to the central widget. We could do a lot of elaborate things, but for our purposes, let's just use a simple tab widget. So we'll go back to our code here and we'll go ahead and let's wrap this up a little bit. We'll define a main function and we'll indent all this code. Then we'll put our standby if name is equal to main. We'll go ahead and execute our main code. And now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and make our own tab widget subclass. And this is going to be a subclass of our Q tab widget. And we'll define an init class with a parent and then go ahead and call our parent initialize and pass in our parent. And what we'll do from here on on is we'll actually add uh, tabs here using the uh, add tab method, but we'll get to that in a sec. So 